What's up guys? Welcome back to Title Gardens. The last time I was here talking about my tank, we had just finished doing everything in terms of plumbing and doing a lot of leak testing and finally filling it with salt water to get it ready to cycle. That was around two months ago. So follow me as I go through the hellscape that has been cycling this tank. So first off, maybe the first week or two of cycling this tank was pretty easy, at least as far as I was concerned. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I was testing this tank and everything seemed fine. You know, we got a little bit of ammonia uh, and a little bit of nitrites forming. Everything seemed pretty normal. I'm like, this will be a breeze. I'll be able to start putting corals in here maybe a month and a half or so, something like that. So that lasted for maybe around a week or two, maybe like a week and a half. And then everything just completely dropped off. Um, the only reading I was getting was a little bit of ammonia and that was it. There were, my nitrite reading was completely clear. My nitrate reading was completely clear. Everything was just gone. And we couldn't figure out for the longest time what was actually going wrong? At first, we were just like, you know what? Maybe it was just like that first little bit was a fluke or I was reading the tests wrong, which is something that could easily happen because obviously I've never done this before and I'm not used to reading the tests and uh, it's kind of up to interpretation most of the time. And when things still hadn't changed, everyone started to get a little bit worried. <laughs> anyway, we started putting bio blocks from set A, our farming tanks that have already been running for a while downstairs. Took some bio blocks from that sump and put it with the bio blocks that I had originally put in there when we first started cycling the tank. And we waited a week for that and nothing changed. So we ended up buying some bacteria culture that we ended up just pouring into the tank. Still, no change. We didn't see nitrites for so long that we ended up doing nitrite tests, not with the, the color readings that go up to like the, I think they're parts per million. We ended up doing a numerical reading that went to parts per billion. It's like a really sensitive test. And at, when we started doing it with that, we had between seven to 11 parts per billion of nitrites most of the time. So we got a good laugh out of that. It was, <laughs> uh, it was never a good time whenever we had to pull out the little egg. So we, we keep testing it, hoping that something will happen. And then uh, Than had the idea that instead of putting whole mysis shrimp in there from our fish food concoction that we uh, just squirt into the tank because we have to go around feeding the fish anyway, might as well just put some of that into my tank and there we go, there you have ammonia. That takes a while to break down. So Than thought, hey, let's just put the juice from that little mixture into my tank because it's very concentrated and it doesn't take that long to break down. And he's like, let's put that in there and see how that goes. Keep testing it, nothing. And then finally, ladies and gentlemen, we had a nitrite reading. It had been so long since I've seen that test turn even the slightest bit purple. It was outstanding. And another thing that makes me a little angry <laughs> about this whole situation is the fact that, so, okay. So you may have seen recently in another video that we have a new quarantine tank uh, getting set up, right? And I'm angry <laughs> because this tank this bare nothing tank, except for maybe some bio blocks in the sump, already has so many nitrites in it, and it's been cycling for maybe a week and a half. What? What am I doing wrong here? <laughs> this bear tank is so much newer than my tank, and it's already farther ahead in this cycle than mine is. What gives? I'm, oh, I'm so upset. That's the one thing that makes me the most upset about this specifically. So, but right now, uh, I know that things are working. Why? Because my tank is no longer clear. We have some stuff 
growing up on these rocks. Uh, I don't know what kind of algae that is. All I know is that it's something because for the longest time, while we weren't getting any nitrite or nitrate readings, my tank was completely clean. Despite the fact we've been putting a lot of shrimp in there, usually you're supposed to get a cloudier tank with tossing waste in there. But no, everything was perfectly clean. No one had to clean the glass or anything. So uh, I'm actually happy to see a dirty tank because that means something is working. So cycling issues aside, uh, other things that have been happening with this tank are we finally have some little clownfish buddies that have been waiting a very long time to get into this tank. Uh, they've just been hanging out in our quarantine system that we have set up in the building. Uh, it is a mated pair, but they're so cute. Look at them. I really wanted black and white clownfish, like the ones that look like little panda bears, because those are adorable. But these were just the ones that were readily available to us. And so I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to be super picky about my clownfish because uh, one of the other guys that works here, he went on a very big trip and had these clownfish and couldn't keep them in his tank because he was going to be gone for a month. So he's like, you know what? You can have them. And the best part was they had already started hosting in a rather large frog spawn that he had been keeping in his tank. And if you remember uh, my tank ideas video, I wanted frog spawn in my tank and hopefully wanted the clownfish to host in it. So it really fit this idea that I had and it didn't matter at that point that they weren't black and white. I'm also excited to see if you guys were right about clownfish being very bitey and very aggressive. Because I have been, every now and then, I'll like dip my little fingers in the tank just to kind of, you know, just see what they'll do. Because uh, I was curious. And they just kind of come up and they like sniff a little bit. And then, if can fish sniff? They have noses. I have no idea. But they'll come up and like check my fingers out and then they'll swim away. So I don't know if that's just because they're not really used to their surroundings yet or what. But they seem to like me for now. <laughs> so I guess that's what matters, right? So hopefully we can get some more fish into the tank to kind of start cleaning up this uh, algae business and then start putting corals in there. And then speaking of corals, it has come to my attention through many comments <laughs> that my tank does look a bit empty. Maybe this isn't going to be as full looking as I thought it was going to be. So uh, I decided to go ahead and build another rockscape to put into the other side of my tank. And then I'm just moving the archways into the middle of the tank as little uh, like accent pieces, if you will. So hopefully that'll give me a lot more space to attach corals to. And I'll never say no to building aquascapes because it's so much fun. I keep calling it the reefing equivalent to building with Legos. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for rather aggressively bringing it to my attention. <laughs> I appreciate it. So as for what we want to do next, none of my coral ideas have changed. We're still keeping it a fairly mixed tank in terms of what kind of corals I want in there because I do want a lot of LPS on the top of that tree that I mentioned the last time. And I also want a lot of mushrooms on the trunk of that and then I want like Montipora and like other encrusting type of SPS corals in there. Oh and some zoas as well. It's going to be a rather mixed tank still and I'm still very excited about it. We're just playing the waiting game at this point uh, just to see how our how my tank does and hopefully nothing else bad happens. <laughs> All right everybody that's it for this tank update. I hope that with the next video I can update you guys on putting the fish in the tank and corals in the tank and all of that fun stuff. So before I go, remember we do have merch available on our Teespring store. Uh, link is down in the bio for that. Uh, this is personally, this is my favorite hoodie. It is so soft. <laughs> like a hoodie shouldn't be this soft on the inside, but I love wearing it. It's so nice. There's a bunch of other hoodie designs as well as t-shirts. 
drinkware, our prints. Our prints are really nice with all of our uh, custom photography that we do here. And by we, I mean me. It's all photography done by me. <laughs> So if you still want to support Tidal Gardens, but you can't exactly buy our corals because you live outside of the United States, Teespring ships internationally. So you can get yourself one of these cozy sweatshirts for the upcoming fall season, along with many other pieces of merch. Other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Take care and happy reefing. Oh God, I'm hungry. A snack appears. Where does Teespring ship to? According to Spring Answers, Teespring, if you're ordering domestically, you can expect the order to ship from our production facility in Kentucky or one of our other print partners scattered throughout the US. That didn't answer my question at all. <laughs> Fun fact, I actually know nothing. I've been talking out of my ass this whole time. Can't even... Can you get this open? I can't, I can't get this open. Just, here we go. I don't know what else to talk about. <laughs>